I've got a project to build. Got a gift here from PCB Way by way of sponsorship. I've well, seen this before in a mailbag I showed. So this is my PCB for the DRAM tester. So I've got a bunch of them in here, about 10 I think. So it's sponsored by PCB Way, so thank you much PCB Way for sending them to me again. Free stuff, it's always great, and um, usual stuff. Yeah, so they come. Just like this. So I'm playing this project. We'll get this built. We'll try it out and see if my project works. I mean, these are available on PCBWay. I've made these as a public project, so you can actually download these. You can actually get the Gerbers, you get the firmware, everything, or you can just order the PCBs directly from PCBWay on my project page. There'll be links down below in the description. So make sure you click on that to so have a look. And this will allow you to make your own version of this. I do have another future project involving this exact board. I've got an idea for doing an in-circuit tester. In theory, I think it'll work, but I haven't done it yet. I won't know. But I'm, I'm going to build this board up as a basic board first, as the original one, which is to basically replace my prototype here. This is my prototype one, which I've been using. I'll tell you at the end of the video, so make sure you keep watching until the end, about the idea I had for making an in-circuit tester. And I'll probably do a follow-up video with that once I do that. But first, you have to build the basic board. Right, so I've got the parts I need here. So I've got 13 150 ohm resistors. I've got a 33 ohm resistor, a larger size, that's about half watt. I've got a 680 ohm. I've got a 2 n 3906 two 22 microfarad capacitors. I have a 7805 equivalent. This is a buck converter on a 7805 package size. I use these quite often, it's quite handy things. Very low power, don't generate any heat, that kind of thing, you know, so they're much better than natural regular, much more efficient. I have a press button and some female headers as well because I'm not going to put the parts directly onto the here yeah, I'm going to put the Arduino or the screen directly on I'm going to use headers just makes it easy to work with in the future or if you have to do repairs or if the board doesn't work for some reason and I also add my former over here for forming the leads on the components not like we need to because not that many but it'd just be nice to get a more uniform look to them by being in a minute for one of these formers. And again, thanks for PCB away. And don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like these kinds of things. So to start with, I'm going to clean the PCB with some IPA just to make sure there's no oily residue or anything on it. Just helps the soldering process a little bit. No, we'll just go. There we go. No forming required. These ones. These are the wider ones. That's those ones here. Dead easy. Pop those in. And like any good nerd, I'm making sure these are lined up with the bands the same way around as we are. So the colours on the bands match. So when you put the parts in, they're all the same, all the way down. You have to make sure you do that. So that's all my sort of resistors on there. These are the ones that lay down flat. So I flip it over, put some flux on it. I don't really need it anyway, but it just helps slightly. Actually, I've got a better idea. Hang on. There we go. This is much better. So I've got this thing for. Well, there's one part I haven't got yet. It's a capacitor, which goes in here. Here's the capacitor I intended to put on here. The plastic cap. I might actually need more flux on this one because I wipe the residue off. So here we go. So we get right through the ball, double side, so on the ground side. Hmm. 
de ce piste. Always hold onto the leads when you cut them. You don't want to fly off, hitting in the face or going to your coffee or whatever. Or worse, you can even have them end up flicking into an instrument or a piece of test gear and go through one of the events and go into your computer keyboard or something like that. You go over it sometimes and they flick out. That's those parts. Put the push button in. That's in place. And now, this I'm probably going to change the footprint. I'm not quite sure. I could either go in vertically like this or I could lay it down, take this header out, and actually lay it down like that in, in place with the header coming straight through. Probably more likely to do that, just so it takes up this space. So you have to change the header on that regulator board there. So now I'm just going to flip it over, solder those pins in place, get it straight and everything and get it sitting nice. Start putting headers in. So this is the header for the OLED display. We'll just hold that in place with one finger. Hopefully we've got enough solder on my iron, I'll just tack it in place. Yep, that works. Right. So now we've got a tricky bit of soldering in the Arduino. Now I'm going to, have to put the male headers on the Torino itself and obviously the females on the ball. So what I've done is I've put all the headers in place. The A6 and A7 ones I'm not actually using anyway. This ball doesn't have that footprint here, they had them over here. Slightly different. I'm not using those, at least not at this point. So I'm not going to use those ones on this particular board. I'm just going to leave those disconnected. But A4 and A5 are needed because they run the OLED display. So I'm just going to get all this sitting in place, lined up. Then I'll solder on the Torino side then that'll be fairly solid and secure, then I can solder on the PCB side and get that done. But that's how you get it all lined up, you don't sort of put them together and try and match them up. You put them in place, then solder it in. That way it's a bit easier to do. You need to put a bit of flux on this to get this going along. Just a couple of wasmans. Don't too much. It's a new tube so it tends to ooze out a bit more than I'd like. It builds pressure up. It's actually putting on too much flux right now. Right. Do the top side of the board as well, then I can do So you may notice there's one thing missing over here. That's that socket there. So I actually ordered a 16-pin ZIF socket, but it hasn't arrived yet, so I can't quite do that bit. At least not to the way I'd like to. I do have an 18-pin, um, and it will actually fit in that spot, but it's not really what I want to do. Obviously I'm going to have two extra pins. That might be a bit misleading about what's going on. I'm going to wait until the proper socket arrives for that. But what we can still do is we'll be able to pop a chip into this footprint and it should still make a good enough connection to actually work. Just to do testing and then once the proper ZIF arrives I'll add it on. Still the OLED from my prototype here. So I haven't really used the Arduino from this board because it's got hard wires going up to these pins here. I thought 
but it's just easier just to use another board and reprogram it than to try and clean those holes or anything like that, you know. So there's how it's going to go. So I think I need to go away and program this until we know, and then we'll power it up and test it, see if it goes bang or not. What do you reckon? Here's Polly. Look at that. There's a cat on the camera. She can see a big cat on the screen. She's getting stroked. She can't quite understand it. Alright, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's try the board out. I've programmed it. The display did come up briefly whilst I was doing the programming. The display did light up, so something's working. Let's power it up for the first time properly with this supply here. I'm confident the supply works okay. I should actually verify that too. It might go bang or something. And uh, it could happen. There's a ground right here. I'll tap onto that. And then I'll probe onto the VCC pin over here, for example. I want to see what the voltage is here. In fact, I'll even get my multimeter in shot. Okay, here on. And then measure that. Yep, 5.05, that's fine. Display's coming up. So far, so good. Pair it up. There we go. If you're seeing any flicking on camera, it's purely because of the frame rate. Um, I'm not seeing any flickering here. All right, let's put a chip in it and see if it actually works. Here are some new old stock DRAM chips which just arrived. I've already verified this particular chip, I believe. So let's get this into the holes. It should actually sit in there nicely enough to actually be tested without a socket. Okay, there you go, that's sitting in there. That's safe to do it with it powered up because I've got it switching the outputs on and off. So all the outputs aren't turned on and this transistor up here is switching off the power to the chip until you do a test. So it's safe to actually do it with it powered up. Right, let's do a test, does it work? Bad IC. Oh, could just be a bad connection. Well, got something completely wrong. Oh, it's not working. Could just be bad connections though. Let's test some voltages around the place. So let's just go from a ground point. So there it'll do. And then hit the test button. I should be able to measure the voltage coming on. There you go. Voltage does turn onto the chip. We got further this time. So probably it's just a bad connection. I don't really want to solder an IC to socket in for this thing. Mm. Okay, I think we've got good enough connection. Here we go. I've tilted the chip over slightly, so it's pressing a bit harder. And it's like it's working now. Because it will just stop as soon as it finds a fault. So, it's looking promising. It's like it works. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I think I lost my connection again. Well, I'll just put the IC into a, a turn pin socket. See if that actually presses on the PCB enough to actually work. Let's try and find out. Haven't tried it yet. No. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, wait. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. My plans. My plans of world domination. So what I was thinking I could do is do in-circuit testing with this, which is why I've actually picked up one of these IC clips. Picked up a couple of these. So what I was thinking of doing is actually running this off some ribbon cables, which I then plug into the ZIF socket. And you could reprogram this, and instead of putting outputs to control the chip, it's just inputs, right? And as the power supply here is switched off, it doesn't matter. You can then read what's connected to it. Because you can't write to it an in-circuit RAM chip because it, it rarely works because of the other circuitry around it affecting it. And you're trying to basically power the entire RAM bus. So, not a good idea. But you can read it. So my plan, I've got two options here. Should I tell you both? Ooh, I should, might hold the second one off until the second video. Hmm. Decisions, world domination. What I was thinking you could do is use this to sniff the RAM bus instead. So you can then monitor the RAM, you can use this to read what's being written to the RAM, 
and then read back from it. So you can store in arrays or something like that or some kind of buffer what has been written to the RAM. So this is basically duplicating what's in the RAM. And then when it reads the RAM, this can compare against what the RAM contains versus what this contains. And if there's a discrepancy, it'll warn you. And that was my first idea. I do have a second idea. You have to wait to the next video to find that one out. All right, so I've decided to solder on a socket. Let's we'll see if this works. I didn't want to solder on a socket, but now I'm going to have to take it off again when the zipper arrives, but oh well. I just want to see it pass so I know the board's working properly. It passed. The board is working. Excellent. Oh, hold on. Excellent. Don't forget to check out the project page on PC Way. There'll be links down below for this. And subscribe and click like if you like the video. And like I said, I'll be doing a further video on this to show how to do in circuit testing. Hopefully, assuming it works. Don't forget the playlist down here. Hand over here at the end of the video. And the subscribe link and the Patreon link and that sort of stuff. Catch you later. My plans of world domination. <laughs>